On June 1st, 2016, Bam Adebayo was asked on Twitter who his favorite NBA player is, and he said, James Harden. On December 10th, 2020, Bleacher Report posted an Instagram picture showing that James Harden now opened up his preferred trade destination to include the Miami Heat. And guess who liked that post? Jimmy Butler. And just earlier today on the Bill Simmons podcast, when asked about the possibility of James Harden to the Miami Heat, Bill Simmons said, I'm trying to get Harden if I'm Miami. Man, I don't give a fuck what Bill Simmons said or what he ever has to say, ever. But it's pretty clear that the top two players on this Heat team in Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo would welcome James Harden to the Miami Heat. Now, would I personally want James Harden in the Miami Heat? God, no. I don't want that whopper, flopper, muffin topper, playoff choker, ego stroker anywhere near my team ever. And that's the end of the story. That's, that's really all I got to say about that fat bum on my team. Man, I don't know why that guy is always so negative, man. Jeez, he's always so negative. Hi there. I'm Optimistic Ant. And you may recognize me from the Basement Sports Network. And if you don't, go subscribe to our channel over there. We'll be live streaming after every single Heat game this season. But I'm here today because we got some breaking news from Sham Sharania, who said that James Harden has not shown up to 76ers training camp since Sunday, and he may not return to team activities at all as he's currently awaiting a trade. And we also got some news from that puppet Adrian Wojnarowski, who said that the Clippers and the 76ers are very far in trade talks at the moment. But why am I excited? because that means that the Miami Heat have a real possibility to land James Harden. And personally, me, optimistic Ant, I believe that he would be the perfect fit with the Miami Heat. So I wanna start by talking about Harden's fit on the actual basketball court with the Miami Heat, which personally, I think is a match made in heaven. He is still an elite point guard and facilitator, so much so that he actually led the entire league in assists last season at over 10 per game. And a lot of those assists are him finding his big man. Of course, we saw it a lot with Joel Embiid last season, but even in years past, that boy had Clint Capella looking like he had somewhat of an offensive ability. I mean, James Harden is one of the best in the NBA at the pick and roll game. He finds guys cutting hold towards hold on, hold on. him. Stop the video. You think that you can guard me? <laughs> that is crazy. Listen, if I make the shot right now, subscribe, like the video. I was your boy out a lot. Let's get it. Cash money. Leave a like down below. I do appreciate it. He can find those guys in the backdoor dunker spot. He is great at finding the big men, throwing lobs. That is what he is elite at. And I think most Heat fans would agree that if Bam Adebayo had an uptick in points this season, it would be nothing but positive for the Miami Heat. And I think having James Harden would allow for that to the highest degree. I mean, you talk about giving James Harden, a guy that's as athletic as Bam Adebayo, as smart as him, as, as aggressive as we want Bam to be, I think having Harden will allow for that. And I really think it'll unlock a lot more of Bam's potential by having James Harden on this team. Now, a lot of people may say that Harden's biggest issue is his playoff performance, which I will acknowledge he has struggled his entire career in the postseason. But if only he had some guy that was maybe, I don't know, the greatest playoff performer ever, like a guy like, I don't know, say, Jimmy Butler. I mean, look who James Harden had these last couple seasons. He had Joel Embiid, another guy who also underperforms every single year in the postseason. So now we can actually get there and we don't need James Harden to score 30, 40 points a game. We got Jimothy Buckets for that. We got Hemi Butler to go out there and drop 56 on the Boston Celtics and Drew Holiday because it showed, it showed the entire league that he's not scared of that team, right? But this video is not about Jim Butler. It's on James Harden. So we have a guy that can now lead us through the regular season. And come playoff time, we let Jimmy Butler take us to the mountaintop. Because, yeah, we know Jimmy Butler. We know what he does in the playoffs where he turns into God mode. We know who playoff Jimmy is. That being said, we know he tends to take more of a lackadaisical approach in the regular season. So who better to supplement that than James Harden, one of the best regular season performers we've seen in recent years. And I think that'll help Jimmy Butler a lot because he can actually take off a little bit, save his body. So maybe come postseason, he is more healthy and we can see that playoff Jimmy for a longer sustained period of time. And I think how you finish in the regular season can actually be kind of important because if you do finish top three, then maybe you get an easier opponent in the first round and you don't have to grind the, the, the last month of the season, grind to make the play in, uh, go balls to the walls in the first season versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Maybe you can get an easier opponent and it'll help your bodies last a little bit longer going into the NBA Finals. So 
we don't start to see guys kind of fall off like we saw last year. Now, another issue that people have with Harden is sort of the conditioning aspect. But throughout recent years, I mean, we've seen guys come to the Miami Heat and truly be the best versions of themselves. I mean, we saw guys like James Johnson and Deion Waiters. And I'd say the one outlier in that is Kyle Lowry, who fans haven't really been happy with the way he's looked, particularly Pat Riley, who actually specifically has called him out multiple times. But still more times than not, we see Eric Spolster and the training staff here and the development staff get the most out of guys. Now, James Harden is a bit of an older guy, so maybe you won't see as big a difference as some of those other guys. But I do think being in this system, I think the, the heat culture is a tangible thing almost. And I think they'll have an effect on James Harden. And if it doesn't, that may be the, the true end to his uh, career as a star in this league because he'll be a hall of famer of course but i think he's really leaving a, a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths as a guy who is lazy unprofessional can't get the job done so i think the miami heat can save him as much as he can save the miami heat and on top of that i think his contract situation helps the miami heat too he is getting paid 35 million dollars this upcoming season but it's an expiring deal, so the Heat would obviously have a lot of money coming off the books, going into next free agency, where maybe they can sign some other guys if James Harden doesn't work out. Now, this is kind of the trade that I, I made, I put together myself. It's not anything new or exciting. It's kind of been thrown around on Twitter a lot. But personally, this is something that I would do, and it's probably the most I would give up. To be honest, just because I think Caleb Martin is too valuable to this team. I think I'd rather save guys like Jovic and Hame for more of a surefire asset than James Harden. But I would be I would be willing to attach a first round pick, obviously send over Kyle Lowry's expiring, and I'd send over Duncan Robinson, which in my opinion is a plus for the Miami Heat because I'm not the biggest fan of Duncan Robinson. I think he gets paid too much money to not perform enough. And truthfully, I'd really just like to get rid of that contract because he is severely underperforming, in my opinion. Now, in this trade, the 76ers do have to send over P.J. Tucker to make the money work. But there's other avenues that they could get this done as well. In my opinion, I'm not sure if the 76ers would even take this trade because as presently speaking, they're actually don't want to accept the Clippers trade unless it includes Terrence Mann. And it sounds like the Clippers trade is just kind of salary filler, uh, maybe a first round pick and some swaps. So you could argue this might be better for Philly because they do get Kyle Lowry going back to his hometown. So maybe they value him as a starting point guard on that team because he's won a championship and kind of show those guys what championship pedigree is. And maybe they value Duncan Robinson as another shooter because at his best, Duncan Robinson is a very, very good player in this league. I just think that maybe he needs a change of scenery. So maybe they still value him as an asset as well. Because of course, when they have Joel Embiid, they're still trying to compete for a championship. They're not necessarily going for the future. So maybe they, they think that these are two assets that they can help them win now, especially since James Harden really doesn't want to be there, hasn't shown up the practice, so they don't have much of a choice. And from the Heat's perspective, obviously you're getting James Harden. You'd slide him into that starting point guard spot. You'd still have Tyler Hero at the two. And hey, maybe PJ Tucker can have a bit of a resurgence being back in the Heat system where he thrives so well. I think I'd personally even prefer to see him at the starting power forward spot over Kevin Love because even though PJ Tucker is 38 years old, he still shot the three very well last year. He was almost at 40%. He could still rebound and he could still play defense. And I think having Kevin Love, Hayward Highsmith, Caleb Martin, I think having guys like that will really allow the Heat to kind of limit PJ Tucker's minutes. So maybe he can be relatively fresh entering the postseason. But honestly, that's all I got to say for this video. I just kind of wanted to get a James Harden video out there in case it were to happen. I told myself I would never make a video on him, but there started to be more noise today. And I said, what the hell? I'll get one out there. I do want to get some prediction videos up on conference standings and award videos and all that stuff out before the season starts. So maybe Make sure y'all subscribe so you don't miss it. But most importantly, comment down below. Let me know if you're a Heat fan, if you want James Harden, and if you do, what would you give up for James Harden? And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, please subscribe. It definitely helps the dream out a lot. But that's all I got to say. Optimistic and out. I'll see you next time. Look, pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast. Slash. Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch, don't a fan, man. Hmm.